Hey guys, what's up? Today I'll be doing a video talking about and reviewing the first three uh, albums by the band Deeds of Flesh. Now it would be hard to just narrow it down to one favorite, but um, Deeds of Flesh is definitely a big contender for my favorite brutal death metal band, and they're without a doubt my most listened to brutal death metal band at the moment. And uh, I finally was able to track down all three original copies of their first three releases, which can kind of be a pain to do, but luckily I was able to uh, um, get some good deals and finally have these copies in my collection. And uh, this is a band that I like about half their discography. These first three releases are definitely my favorite. Um, I like Path, uh, Reduced to Ashes. Those are pretty good albums, but these are definitely um, my favorite Deeds releases. So uh, first up is uh, Gradually Melted. This was released in 1995 and it came out on Wild Rags Records. Um, and this is just the one that started it all for Deeds of Flesh and a lot of other um, West Coast uh, death metal bands at the time. Um, this came out in 1995, so by no means was it the first brutal death metal um, album or EP to be released, but I really do think this kind of changed the game and laid the blueprint, especially for California brutality, just that kind of super uh, technical and just really insane over-the-top style of death metal. And um, this is a really, really strong uh, release to start out on. It's four songs, uh, Three Minute Crawl Space, Gradually Melted, Human Sandbags, and Feelings of Metal Through Flesh. And uh, even though this is an absolutely excellent release, I think this definitely, you can tell, is uh, Deeds of Flesh in their infancy a little bit. Uh, the songs are super well done, but when you look at them in comparison with the other two full lengths, I definitely think they would go on to outdo uh, these songs, but they're still really good, and I know a lot of people, um, it's kind of a mixed bag, but some people will cite this as their favorite release, but uh, yeah, just right from uh, the beginning of this disc, you put on three minute crawl space, and you're blasted with uh, blast beats, a low growl, and then a really, really killer bass break, um, and Deeds of Flesh would just go on to pioneer these classic tropes of brutal death metal, whether it be that layering high and low vocals uh bass breaks and just uh this super classic signature style of breakdown that they really honed in on uh and they just have a really overwhelming and technical and powerful sound uh the lineup on the cd is uh eric lindmark on guitar and vocals jacoby kingston on bass and vocals and uh joey heaslett on drums and all three of these guys just put on a really, really excellent performance. Uh, definitely a big Legion, um, the album Legion by Deicide influence on here. Uh, I think this is probably a good release to check out if you're a bit new to Brutal Death Metal because it does have definitely quite a bit of an old school feel. It's like a mix of Deicide and Cannibal Corpse, uh, but kind of on steroids. It's It's faster and there's a ton of blast beats. And uh, yeah, overall, this is just a really good release um, and an excellent way to start off the discography for Deeds. So 1995, Gradually Melted. And one year later, they would release their first full length on the Spanish label Repulse Records. In 1996, they released the legendary Trading Pieces. And this is an incredible album. One of the best displays of aggression and brutality in music. I mean, this thing will just pummel you. Uh, the first time I heard this, something changed for me. And like so much of what I thought was heavy before just didn't nearly pack as much of a punch after I first listened to this album. It was like everything else didn't even matter. This was uh, the highest point and the highest um, you can go in ext extreme music. And uh, I still do stand by that to an extent. Obviously, bands have played faster with more guttural vocals, but there's just something about that deed style of riffing and that deed style of music that 
on a personal level just hits me so hard and feels so heavy. And uh, this is where they really start to hone their craft and their signature style of riffing and vocal trade-off uh, begins to come into effect. Um, once again, they're continuing you know, with the same lineup and uh, the use of dual vocals between uh, Jacoby and Eric are done really well. Um, Eric has one of my favorite high screams in all of metal. It just sounds uh, really crazy and demonic. And um, this album starts off with some heavy hitters. Uh, Carnivorous Ways is a really, really good way to open up the album. Uh, some great riffs on there. And then my personal favorite Dean song in their whole discography, Born Then Torn Apart. That is just the best example to me of uh, just crazy, crazy heavy riffs. Uh, I think what Deeds did best and what really defined their sound was um, like their signature style of breakdowns. It would basically just consist of like stacked fourth chords and just basically alternating eighth notes and then putting in a group of two sixteenth notes in that stacked fourth chord. And it, it's really easy to imitate, but it, it was just really original at the time when they did it. And uh, this is a very, very powerful album. Uh, good bass playing too. I think Jacoby Kingston is a bit of an underrated bassist. He never did anything super flashy, but he was really able to uh, hold down the rhythm section. And uh, these riffs are by no means simple at all. I mean, obviously they're not the most crazy thing out there, but uh, they are definitely quite difficult. Uh, there's like a lot of tempo changes and a fair amount of technicality. Another thing that this band did really well was um, the use of tempo changes. I mean, they hardly stay on the same tempo for more than five to 10 seconds. I mean, it's that fast pace. It's that crazy and that frantic. Uh, yeah, some more of my favorite songs on here. The title track, Trading Pieces, Impious Offerings, Acid Troops, which is, I think, one of their most underrated songs. Just uh, the most crushing album, in my opinion. Um, yeah, and this is probably uh, the fan favorite, I would say. Uh, there's a lot of different takes out there, but uh, I have no problem with people calling this their best. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, 1996 Trading Pieces. <clears throat> Two years later in 1998, uh, they would release their second full-length album, uh, again on Re Repulse Records. Uh, and this one was titled Inbreeding the Anthropophagi. And this is actually my personal favorite Deeds album. Uh, Jacoby and Eric, of course, are still on strings and vocals. And uh, Brad Palmer um, is playing drums on here. And I think uh, Joey was a, a great drummer on the first two, but uh, something about Brad Palmer's drumming really, really clicks with me. And I, I love his playing a lot. It's just even more frantic than Joey's and really, really fast. A lot of... Uh, double bass and blast beats and just super tumultuous and crazy and that is what i really love about this album and it's a little bit different than trading pieces i think what trading pieces does have over this album is the impact and breakdown riffs i think are a bit more powerful in the debut but overall the reason why i prefer this is basically um the technicality and the speed has been upped um I think the song structures are a little bit more well done and there's just a lot of really maze-like and chaotic riffs. It's one of those records that will take a fair amount of listens for you to be able to really commit um, the songs to memory and I, I really respect that about albums like that, especially this one because it is just super, super chaotic. Uh, it starts off with a quick song titled End of All, and that just sets the pace for this album, and it does not slow down in one bit. And really, to me, this is a record that um, just gets better as it goes along. Um, despite how crazy it is and uh, how maze-like some of the riffs and songs are, there are some things that are uh, pretty memorable and almost um, even catchy. There's this part in um, Infecting Them with Falsehood where... Uh, Eric Limar just uh, in the shrillest and most demonic high voice has this line, uh, bring your children, let me kill them. And that is definitely something, if you just listen to it once, you will take away. Um, 
another uh, good use of like catchy highs are on uh, Canvas of Flesh. Um, I do have some complaints about this album though. It doesn't bother me too much, but the low vocals sound really, really weird. Uh, I can't tell if it was just like a bad vocal performance or if they were recorded kind of strange. Uh, it's not that noticeable, but if you do focus on like the low growls by both Eric and Jacoby, they, they sound kind of weird. Um, but on the other hand, Eric's highs are definitely the best on here. They are like definitely the most shrill and ear piercing highs. Uh, they just cut through the mix super well. And yeah, yeah, this is, uh, definitely my favorite deeds. I, I really, um, respect how they up the technicality, they up the speed and there is still those, um, impact and like stacked fourth riffs, but they're a little bit less prominent than they were on the full length. But um, yeah, this is just an absolutely killer record. And they also have a re-recording of Gradually Melted from the EP. And uh, it's a rare case where I uh, prefer the re-recording over the original. Uh, they make the tempo faster and it just sounds more frantic. And I love that about this album. Yeah, super, super frantic. Uh, definitely one of my favorite Brutal Death Metal albums. So... There it is, the first three Deeds of Flesh releases, Trading Pieces, uh, Gradually Melted, Trading Pieces, and Inbreeding the Anthropophagi. Uh, three of my favorite releases in all of music. Uh, Deeds of Flesh is one of my favorite bands. And if you have not heard them, I would definitely recommend checking them out. Thanks for watching.